Hi, this is Tamara from MooglyBlog.com, and in this video, I'm going to be demonstrating how to crochet the Lux Loops headband, which is a free pattern you'll find on MooglyBlog.com. Please go to the links in the description where you will find right and left-handed video tutorials, as well as a link to the written pattern and all the supplies you need. To make this pattern, I used one section of Bernat Blanket Ogo, about 40 yards worth, and you'll also need a crochet hook, of course. I used a USL 8 millimeter, and you'll also need a hairband, just a sort of normal elastic hairband, and your standard crochet supplies, stitch markers, scissors, and in this case, a large yarn needle. Now, I did mention in addition to the yarn, you need one unusual supply, which is a hairband. These are the kind I use for most of my projects. I just bought a package of it years ago and I've been working out of these ever since. But you can use whichever sort of hairband you have available to you. This creates sort of a universal fit. You can see here, we've worked our headband right into that. So it creates some great stretch. It makes it fit really well around the head and this way it fits most adults. Now here are a couple of the Lux Loops headbands that I've made. And this one's the easiest one to see just because of the color. So here, let's go ahead and take a quick walk through. I joined the yarn in right into the hairband, working right into it as if it were a magic circle or a stitch, crocheted across, we did a few rows even, and then we start creating these great loops, which I'll be demoing here in a moment. These start out looking very different. We transform them, form them into these loops, three rows of them, or three columns, I should say. We've got lots of rows of crochet here. And then finally, we have a row where we tack those loops down, work a few more rows even, and finally, sew it onto that hairband on the other side. So let's go ahead and start crocheting our Lux Loops headband. Now, as I say, we're going to start by working right into the hairband. So we need to have that to begin. We're going to find the end of our yarn here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and put a little twisted loop there on my hook. You can see the tail end comes in front and I can hold onto that tail end. And now I'm going to join right into our hairband with a single crochet. So I've got a loop wound around my hook. I insert my hook in the hairband, yarn over and pull it up, yarn over and pull through two. And now we have a single crochet right on our hairband. Now we need two more for a total of three. So there's one and two. Now we have a total of three single crochets worked right into our hairband and that's it for row one. So now we're ready to begin row two. The rest of the rows of this headband will be worked into the previous row until we sew on that final row on the other side of the headband there. So we can just let that hang out for now. Rows two through seven are all the same. Chain one and single crochet across. So just three single crochets across the row for seven rows. Then we'll make row eight. So for the sake of time, I'm gonna stop there and we'll move on to row eight. So for row eight, we again chain one and turn or turn and chain one, however you like to do it single crochet in the first stitch, two single crochets in the next stitch. So that's that center stitch right there. One, two, and then one single crochet in the last stitch. So now we've gone from four stitches, or excuse me, now we've gone from three stitches to having four stitches at the end of row eight. Now we're ready for row nine and rows nine through 28 are all the same. We chain one and turn, single crochet in the first stitch. And then we chain six and single crochet in the next stitch three times. So let's do that together. One, two, three, four, five, six. Come back down here, single crochet in the next stitch. One, two, three, four, five, six. Come back and single crochet in the next stitch. And once more, one, two, three, four, five, six, single crochet in the last stitch. There we are. So at the end of row nine and all the way through row 20 set, 28, excuse me, you'll have a single crochet, chain six, single crochet, chain six, single crochet, chain six, single crochet. So let's do a couple more of those rows here together because that's what's going we're going to use these loops to form that braided look for our headband, and it is going to get a little crazy as we continue. So let's go ahead and make a couple more of those rows. We're gonna chain one and turn, single crochet in the first single crochet. There we are, chain six again. One, two, three, four, five, 
six. And we come back down here, find that next single crochet. There we are, just pull those loops right out of the way. Put your single crochet right in there. Chain six again, one, two, three, four, five, six. Come back down here, pull it apart, find that next single crochet right there. And do it again. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then we have just that last one right there at the end. So now what you want to do, like I say, is keep making these rows. Rows nine through 28 are all just like what we've just done. And then we're going to have a whole bunch of loops. So I'm going to go ahead and add some more rows. You add some more rows as well. And I'll see you when it's time to assemble our loops. Okay, so I've only added a few more rows to mine, but if you've made all the way through row 28, you can see how it really widens out here and you're gonna have a whole bunch of these really wide rows. That's okay, you haven't done anything wrong. That's exactly what it should look like right now. I've just only worked a few here on our sample. To count your rows, to make sure you've worked enough rows because it can get a little tricky at this point, I just find that very first loop and I start with row nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, etc. on through the rest of your rows. So. Once you've got your 28 rows made, then we need to pause for a minute and we're going to twist our and assemble our loops before we continue crocheting because the next row will tack that last loop that we've made down and hold it down um, permanently. So go ahead and lay this out. I'm gonna go ahead and remove my hook. I'm gonna pull this loop up nice and big so it won't pull out. I know with this fuzzy yarn, I don't have to worry about it, but if you are worried about it, you can take another stitch marker and put it right through the loop and around the end of yarn that's attached to your skein and that usually keeps that loop open just in case you know pets and kids might want to grab it and run off so we're going to start in the center column and we're going to start twisting and braiding our loops we want to find that very first one we made in row nine again this is going to be the center one but the one we're going to start with and we're going to simply twist our loop it doesn't really matter which direction you twist it but you want to be consistent so i like to twist them this way then you find the next loop just go ahead and take your time find the row 10 loop and pull that loop right through your twisted loop. Like so, there we are. I'm gonna give it a nice little yank, there we go. You can see how that one's twisted and now held down by the one there. So now we wanna do the same thing. Twist this one, again, make sure you go the same direction. Find the next loop and poke it up and through. Give that a little pull. And now you can see we're getting that braided look right there. Do the same thing, turn it the same direction Find the next loop and pull that loop through. There we are. And we're just going to continue doing that. Make sure you always include the twist. Find the next loop and pull it through. And you just continue that all the way through row 28. So on our little sample here, we're gonna say that's row 28. So we do our twist, pull the row 28 loop through and nice and high. And then we're going to take one of our stitch markers and help secure that a little bit so it's a little less likely to pull back through and come undone. If it does come undone, it's not a big deal. You just redo it. You know, it's very easily, as you can see here, done by hand. So you can sort of even those out if you like, get the look you like, but now our center braid is done. So now we can do the ones on either side, whichever one you want to do next. Again, you just wanna start with that first one, turn it, make sure you twist your loop the same direction, find the next loop and pull it through. Give it a twist, find the next loop, and pull it through. And we're just going to continue doing this all the way to the top for each of these columns of loops. If you want to, you can play with the directions of the twist. You can mix it up on purpose if you like, do different columns, different directions, um, have some fun with it. But for me, I like the look of the consistency, so that's how I wrote it. But you can do it however you like. So you can see how I've already gotten to the top of my second column. Of course, I'm just doing a little demo size here. So I will secure that with my stitch marker and I'm actually going to link it to that stitch marker because now they really can't come undone. There we are. And that leaves me free now to concentrate on our last column. Do the same thing and I'll see you when we're ready for row 29. Okay, so it looks a little crazy right now. I've got that last loop secured all nice and together so they're not going anywhere. And I've put my hook back in the active loop of my yarn that's attached to my skein. So now we're ready for row 29. And row 29 is simply chain one and single crochet in each stitch across. But that's just the single crochet. So let's go ahead and do that together. Remember there's four actual single crochets here. So we're gonna go in the first one there, one. 
And then just look really carefully, kind of look at those loops. You can find number two. Don't worry about those other loops. We've got those attached with our stitch markers there. Find that third single crochet right there. Just go right in there. There we go. And then finally, our last one should be hanging out right here on the end. There we are. And that is row 29. And we've got four single crochets made. Now it's time for row 30. And if you followed along with the written pattern, you'll see there's a special note about row 30. Basically, when we stopped and did our braiding, we could have ended up doing that on either side. It doesn't really matter. It's totally reversible. You don't have to make sure that you stop at row 28 and then go up from that direction. It can be either side, whichever side you braided your loops on. So if you ended up braiding your loops on the other side, it's going to look just as fine because we've been working back and forth in rows down here and we will at the end too. But this next row, row 30, might have to be worked a little differently just depending on what side your uh, loops ended up on. But basically it's the same idea. We're going to be working across this row, decreasing those middle two stitches back down to one stitch, because remember we started out with just three, and we want to work through these three loops to tack them down. So my loops are in front. Let's go ahead and work them in front together. Okay, so let's chain one and turn or turn and chain one. And then the first thing we're going to do is go through the first chain six loop and the first stitch. Now, if your loops are behind, you'll be going through the first stitch and then the first chain six loop. We've got our loops in front, so we go through the loop first. What we're going to do is go ahead and detach that loop from the others here. There we are. I'm gonna go ahead and remove that stitch marker and set it aside. And now before I put my hook through this loop, I wanna add one last twist, just to make it match all the others. Then I'll put my hook right through that loop, then find that very first stitch right back there. Yarn over, pull that loop through the stitch, pull it up through the loop, and finish your single crochet. Again, if your loops are on the other side, then you simply go into the stitch first, then twist, then go into the loop. Same thing, just different order of operations. Now this one's a little trickier. For this one, we want to insert our hook through that loop, but also single crochet two together behind it. So this is the way I like to do it. Again, we need to disengage our loop from the others here, and set aside that stitch marker. I'm gonna start by twisting that loop, same direction, there we go. Insert my hook right through the loop. Now I'm going to insert my hook in the second single crochet behind it. Yarn over and pull up a loop. Then the next single crochet, yarn over and pull up a loop. And now I'm going to yarn over and pull through all of these loops. So I wanna pull through that loop and our chain six loop. And finally, the loop that we started with on our hook right there. So now we've secured that loop and decreased back here. Finally, we've got our last loop there. Luckily, hasn't pulled back out. So we can go ahead and pull that stitch marker out of there. Give this one a little twist. Go right through that loop. And then find the very last single crochet. Yarn over, pull through that single crochet and that loop. And finish our single crochet there. So now we have finished row 30. We're back down to just three stitches and all our loops are secured. So now all we need to do is work another seven rows to match the seven rows that we were supposed to work at the beginning. Simply chain one and single crochet in each stitch across for a total of three single crochets in each row. So this would be row, oop, finish that one. This would be row 31 and we would need a total of 37 rows for this section. I'm going to go ahead and just add one more here since this is just our little sample size. But of course you should have a total of 37 rows on your full sized headband. We're gonna go ahead and say that was row 37 just for the sake of our demo here. Go ahead and cut your yarn. Now we don't wanna leave just our normal six inches. We wanna go ahead and leave a long tail for sewing. So I'm gonna go with about 12. Then to finish off our Lux Loops headband, all we need to do is pull up on that loop and find that large yarn needle. Now when I work with Bernat Blanket or Bernat Blanket Ogo, I really like to use these Susan Bates finishing needles. They're nice and wide so I can get the yarn right in there and it just makes it a little bit easier than trying to fit a big jumbo, super jumbo yarn through a standard needle. You can see you can just pop it right in there and start sewing. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and take that end and now I want to sew to the opposite side of this headband. 
Now, the headband moves around in there, so you don't have to worry about getting it exactly opposite. You can just adjust it on the headband itself. But the really important thing, one thing you don't want to do, and I'm speaking from experience here, is accidentally twist your headband and then start sewing, because then you're going to end up with a twist in it. Instead, make sure you lay it out really nicely and then bring it up so you can start sewing it together without a twist. Then we go under the hairband and then under a stitch and just pull it right through under the hairband and then into the next stitch and pull it on through. Try and keep those little sorted out there. There we go. And you can do the same thing then in the last stitch. Sometimes I like to go ahead and put an extra stitch in that last stitch just to secure it really well before I weave in those ends. There we go. But then I would just go ahead and weave in that end just like my other end, and you have finished your Lux Loops headband. And that's how to crochet the Lux Loops headband, which is a free pattern you'll find on mooglyblog.com, along with links to all the supplies and right and left-handed video tutorials. Here is another look at the finished headband full size, where you can see those seven rows, and then all our beautiful loops braided together, some more rows, and it's just sewn right onto that headband. So I hope you'll give this pattern a try. It's a great way to use up all your odds and ends and other little sections of Bernat Blanket Ogo or Bernat Blanket that you might have. And it is a great quick gift for the holidays. Thanks so much for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe.